Welcome back. Well, it's something we do every night. But why we dream what we dream is still a mystery to most of us. It is, Sarah. Mm. To interpret some of the wackier dreams Sarah has had, Jane Teresa Anderson joins us now from Hobart. Hey, Jane, how are you this morning? Did you sleep well? Did you dream well? <laughs> I did. I did. Did you? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah got a mixed bag. Mm. Um, but you've been analysing dreams for more than three yes. decades. Do they serve a purpose? Mm. Oh yes, so you, you dream to process your experiences, your emotions, your feelings, your beliefs, your perspectives on life to try to make sense of the world. But there's a little bit more to it than that because when you know how to look at a dream, you get to discover how your mind works, you get to discover if you've got any particular blocks, mm. and you get to discover how, what you can do to um, improve your experience of life. My, I reckon uh, my kids um, tend to have more nightmares or they, they wake up um, distressed sometimes, um, not just because I'm their dad. Yeah, there might be a reason for that. <laughs> um, do, but do they have more nightmares than adults? Look, children, have, children face so much change in life and change, um, they get scared, they get fears. You know, the job of a child is to go out into the world and face their fears basically and learn and grow. But there was a recent survey done, um, a global dream census done by Lego Group, and they discovered in Australia that almost one and a half of children, almost half of the kids in Australia, dream of monsters and of being chased and of wild animals. But there's something that you can do as a parent to help a child with this. So let's imagine your child has a, has a, has a dream where they're being chased by a monster and they're running away. When you wake up in the morning, you can get them a wide awake in their playroom and maybe get out some toys. And we just mentioned Legos, so maybe get out Lego bricks. And you get them to build a monster, like the monster from their dream. And in doing that, you're getting them to work and face with their fears. And then when the monster's built, you get them to take it apart and build something really nice yeah. in its place. So what you're doing yeah. is you're helping your child to transform their fears mm. and really making them the, the hero of their dreams yeah. or the hero of their life. Such a good strategy. And, Jane, I absolutely love this stuff. I bought a dream book when I was in high school because I'm so fascinated by dreams and the meanings behind them. Now, I want to ask you about a specific dream and whether that I had and whether you are actually able to predict the future. Last week, I shared a dream on this show. Let's take a look at it. So I had a dream last night. Oh, oh. yes. I had a dream. And, and it, might be, oh. no, it might be a premonition that it was a Brisbane and Sydney grand final. Oh. That's right, the so two favourites. That was bef No, they weren't the favourites. That was before both teams qualified into the grand final. So is it possible, Jane, that dreams can actually be a premonition? Am I a psychic? She certainly is. <laughs> you might be. Um, it's probably more likely that being a great a AFL fan, you kind of knew who might end up in the yeah. grand final. It might have See, been a, a lucky choice. Um, it's more likely to be a deeply meaningful, symbolic dream that you and I would have to sit aside Ooh. and have a life to speak about. Yes. All right, I have a dream, a recurring dream, um, that my teeth are falling out. Oh, that happens um, a lot, actually. As you get over 50, yeah. Um, my teeth are falling out, and the other one is uh, I have sometimes have flying dreams. So those two, quickly. How, how do you feel when your teeth are falling out in the dream, Carl? Well, not great. I mean, I have to just I have to put, uh, you know, McDonald's through the blender and... <laughs> I mean... Eat with a straw. Anxious cookie. is the answer. It's generally a dream. It's different for everybody. The meaning's different for everybody. But basically, when your teeth fall out, you're losing something really precious, oh. aren't you? So it can come up at a time when you're fright or fearful that you're losing something. Um, particularly for you working as a presenter, your smile is important, your image is important. There could be unconscious worries of, oh, what if, what if I don't come across in the way that I would like to come across? Yeah, I don't that, know what you could possibly be talking that would about. That be me every day, that's for sure. <laughs> um, this is so fascinating. It is, I love it. Thank you so much um, for being with us and we, we'll love to get you on and get some viewer dreams yes. um, to you in the next week or so. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Jane.